Hello there, here we are with my top 8 favorite builds to dominate in the PvP Coliseum. I got them all ranked, so the further into the video we go, the builds will get stronger and stronger, saving my best for last. Alrighty then, let's do this. Coming in 8th place, we have the Bloody Double Fister. After we got that huge buff to all fist and claw weapons, these have been so much fun to use, and the Star Fist has an A tier strength scaling, which allows you to pour all your levels into strength, vigor, and endurance. That's all you need. You'd be looking like the Elden Ring version of Mike Tyson. I sacrificed so much of my life, can I at least get laid? I like to use the Endure weapon art to safely get in close and start swinging, or sometimes I like to switch it up and use Storm Stomp. This Ash of War will punish spam rolling and give you an open chance to attack. Throwing on Blood Flame is like the cherry on top for this build. Considering the Star Fist already has innate bleed buildup, it's totally possible to now proc bleed with the Blood Flame pretty easily. So if you like the fast paced up in your face style of combat, then this build might be a lot of fun for you. I'm wearing mostly Bull Goat for that high poise. Got Bull Goat Talisman, Great Jar Talisman, Crimson Medallion, and Rotten Winged Insignia. Now sometimes I use both successive attack talismans because the base damage comes fairly low on fist and claw weapons, so it's good to stack up on damage buffs. Crimson Bubble Tier, Damage Negation Tier for the ultimate defense, but can also use the successive attack crack tier for even more of that damage. Now by the way, just so you know, pretty much all of these builds in this video can easily translate from level 125 to 150 or the reverse. Easy peasy bro. Moving on forward to 7th place, the Bleed Twin Blade. More specifically, the Bloody Godskin Peeler with Seppuku. Now after patch 1.07, they nerfed the hell out of blood loss when dual wielding. So that's why it's more effective to use a single Twin Blade now in some situations. The moveset is still fantastic in PvP to punish spam rolling and chasing people down. The star of the show for this build is the synergy between Seppuku, the White Mask, and the Lord of Blood Exaltation. So when using Seppuku, it will automatically activate the effects of the Blood Talisman and the White Mask, immediately giving you a huge damage buff. So make sure to rock 60 Vigor, around 50 to 55 Dexterity, and 50 Arcane. The Lord of Blood Exaltations, Millicent's Prosthesis, or the Crimson Amber Medallion, Urtree Favor, and Bull Goats. Now by the way, when using a Twin Blade, you don't always have to go with Blood Loss. Nowadays, you could go full Dexterity and even use Frost on a Cold Twin Blade with Crag Blade, using a setup like this. Once you inflict a Frost, they got that debuff, and it's game over. This setup is probably just as good or even better than the seppuku tactic, especially if you want to stay away from blood loss so you don't feel like a cheese master. Coming in 6th place, the Double Anchor Spanker. This is your one-shot strength build. All you're really doing is spamming jump attacks. But hey, spamming can't be cheesy when you're using weapons as cool as these bad boys. We want the highest attack power we can get. So on my offhand, I got Crag Blade. Then on my main hand, I got Royal Knight's Resolve. On top of that, you can eat yourself some delicious, tasty, exalted flesh for even more damage. A big part of this build is the Black Feathered Cape, obviously because it enhances your jump attacks, but also because it is so light. It's very low weight, and you'll need a strong weight load with this build, so the Feathered Cape is quite efficient here. Got the Jump Attack Talisman, of course. The Counter Attack Talisman. Now this will give you an extra 15% damage when counter attacking an enemy with Pierce or Thrusting damage. And dude, no joke, apparently because of these anchors have the pointy pokey edges, it counts as Pierce damage. Yeah, so it's great for PvP. Bull Goat Talisman, Great Jar Talisman. Now as you can see, there's a bit of a pattern here with the Great Jar and Bull Goat Talismans. It's because a high poise and strong defense is essential to tank through attacks and not get one-shotted by some sweat dude's optimized build. I implore you to become the sweatball yourself. A respectable sweatball. This is another build that you want to pour all your levels into vigor, endurance, and strength. And there you go, it's simple as that. It's pretty satisfying landing those jump attacks and getting a one-shot kill. In fifth place, I gotta do it man, the Mogwin Spear. For those of you who don't know already, Dual Great Spear is one of the best movesets in the game for PvP. Thrust out of roll, counter attacks, 
It's all devastating, man. And I feel like Magwin Spear is probably the best great spear for the Colosseum because of its famous weapon art. You kind of have to bait people into it or a surprise attack. But if you can land it, sheesh, it's basically over for them. The great spears are a bit on the slow side. So that's why personally, I even prefer using a Reduvia on the left hand instead. It's not perfect, but it's still a freaking killer combination. It's a quick move set, strong weapon arts. It's pretty nice, man. So I'm at this strength soft cap of 55 and arcanes at 45. The power of the weapon art and the bleed buildup will scale with your arcane level. So it's fairly important. If you want the weapon art to be even stronger, you can use Shard of Alexander. Or you can use the Lord of Blood's Talisman, the Counter Attack Talisman because the spears do pierce damage, Bull Goat's Talisman, and Great Jar because you definitely want a high poise with this build. Like I said before, I personally find the Reduvia and Great Spear a better combination and more fun to use. It's just a great moveset, man. And it's not too cheesy. It's just the right amount of cheese. Now before we jump into our top 3, I have an honorable mention. A build I like to call the Mushroom Dude. Now I've seen a few people use this, and then I tried it myself and actually really enjoyed it. And it can be quite powerful if you play it right. The point of this build is to basically capitalize on the damage buffs that you receive from the Rot Exaltation and this awesome looking hat when you inflict Poison or Scarlet Rot. The two best setups for this in my opinion is firstly, the Venomous Fang. Get that successive attacks going which will inflict deadly poison very quickly. Or you can two hand the Ansper Rapier. Thrusting swords are always good in PvP and you can throw some doo doo pots around also, use poison mist, whatever you want. It's just a fun little cosplay type build. Now here we are, entering our top 3. Third place, I got the Frosty Magic Sentinel. I know there's a bunch of you out there thinking right now, Oh my god, here we go. Spamming magic spells, spamming star shower, over and over, cheesy as fuck, bruh. And you know what? You know what I have to say about that? Let's get good, bro. Let's get good. Yeah, that's all. Nah, I'm joking. I actually recommend that you do not spam the same spells over and over, but instead focus on spell combos and using the right spell for the right situation. So that's why this mage build is all about dealing the highest damage while also being able to use a diverse set of spells that combo together nicely. For example, Collapsing Star's gravity spell to pull him in close into a Dula's Moonblade to finish him off. Here are all the spells that I like to use. Ice Crag, Terra Magica, Glintstone Comet, Star Shower, Collapsing Stars into a Dula's Moonblade into Carrion Slicer, and the Moon Spell for a far ranged attack. I also like to use Xammer Ice Storm. It does decent damage considering I got on my Snow Witch hat to buff all those frosty spells. I'm using Carrion Regal Scepter because it has the highest overall sorcery scaling behind Lusat's staff. I'm wearing the Tree Sentinel armor and a cold infused Uchikatana with Spinning Slash. This will give me a strong defense and strong close combat, especially when I'm standing inside my Terra Magica, which gives me 35% magic damage buff. Standing inside this is the the ultimate fuck you to anyone you're fighting. Graven Mass Talisman, Radagon Icon of course, Godfrey Icon because most of the spells I'm using can be charged up, and Erd Tree Favor. Make sure to use the increased magic damage crack tier also. I personally like charging up my spells most of the time, especially with the magic cannon bomb. This thing is wild in 2v2 or 3v3s. I know I be pissing people off all the time. Fully charged up with all my magic buffs going, I can certainly one-shot most enemies with a few of my spells. I have a full in-depth guide for this build on my channel that you can go check out. In second place, Dual Keen Naginatas. This is what all the pro gamers use. This is the cheese build that everyone knows is good, but at least for me, I'm not using blood loss. This setup has some of the best animations for melee attacks, making you the cringe lord of poking booty. You can get a very strong attack power from these spears when using high dexterity and buffs like Cragblade or Lightning Grease. So I got Cragblade on my left hand, then using Beast Roar on my main hand with Lightning Grease. So with the Beast Roar, I'm sprinkling even more cheddar on top of this already cheesy build. Beast Roar is a dexterity type weapon art, so it goes best with a dex build like this. You can use Cold Infused for a frost buildup, but remember they nerfed status effects for dual wielding. 
So I got 60 Vigor, the Endurance soft capped at 25, and as much Dexterity as I could. The Pierce Counter Talisman, Earth Tree Favor, Great Jar, and Bull Goats. And if you feel like you don't need such heavy armor, you can use Crimson Medallion or the Green Turtle Talisman instead. So yeah, pretty straightforward, simple Dexterity build, more pokey stabby weapons. Yep, sorry. In first place, the Pyro Faith build. This is my favorite build of all time, baby. It feels like the king of the arena. Well, for me anyways. I'm only using a couple incantations. Mostly the Giant's Flame Take V. If you can get good at free aiming the Giant Fireball, you'll be freaking devastating at all distance in the Colosseum. I'd be sniping turkeys from across the map with this spell. I'm also using Catch Flame, so up close I blow some of that nasty ass garlic breath of mine in my enemy's face. Then lastly, Flame Grant Me Strength, of course. Using this buff, plus the Flame Shrouding Crack Tier, I'm getting upwards of 30% increased fire damage. So that's why I'm trying to use all fire type attacks here. Including my melee weapon, the Flame Art Infused Banished Knight's Halberd does the trick. I'm using Flaming Strike Weapon Art. Yeah boy, I freaking love Flaming Strike. Now, using the Knight Rider Glaive instead would yield a much stronger Flaming Strike attack. The glaive is probably the best weapon in the game to use this weapon art with, but it has a much higher stat requirement compared to the Banished Knight's Halberd, and the glaive's moveset is not as great as the Banished Halberd. The Banished Knight's Halberd has a great moveset. I mean, look at those stabby attacks. I know we all enjoy poking people. So either one is good though, whichever one you feel in that day. I got the giant sacred seal. I also like to keep a dagger handy. The banished knight halberd r1 attack into the dagger should be a true combo. So yeah, these work great together if you want to switch it up for close combat. I'm wearing the omen smirk mask. The main reason being it is quite a fashion statement. Like obviously, it is beautiful. I mean look at it man, I wish my girlfriend looked like this. <laughs> and finally for talismans. Firstly, definitely use the Phlox Canvas Talisman because those giant flame incantations are the star of the show here. Secondly, I like to use Shard of Alexander for my flaming strike. Now you can also use the Pierce Counter Talisman to increase the damage on our stabbies, then Earth Tree Favor and Bull Goats. Like I said before, when using the Giant's Flame Take V, I recommend free aiming it rather than locking on. This will allow you to be much more accurate and you can snipe them turkeys from across the arena. And finally, don't forget your fire throw pots. Gotta have some fire throw pots ready to cheese people with. Make sure to comment all your thoughts and opinions down below. Thank you for watching.